Okay, the question was, uh, given a bobart embossing, how do I go about machining it? So I'm going to go through some of the, uh, the steps that will be necessary to do that. First thing I want to do is take a look at where my embossing is in space here. Uh, of course, I can see that the, uh, the origin is down here in the lower left corner, but if I go to a front view, I can see that the top of the emboss runs at about 0 0.3 inches. So what I want to do, I normally like to uh, have the part, top of part, or top of stock rather, at 0. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this 0 0.35 inches. But that's not where you do that. I'm uh, going to do it in Bob Art by simply putting the stock which is this base plane here. Go to create modify stock and then minus 0.35 inches there. Hit OK and that drops down to minus 0.35. I'll go to an actual front view. And you see that uh, I can create stock with the uh, top of stock at zero. My part will be within that stock and below zero. So that's my next move is to create my stock. I'll go to the cam tree, go to stock geometry. I don't have any stock geometry set up yet. Go to the top view. Five by seven rectangle will do for my stock. So go to rectangle five by seven. Okay. So there you see a rectangle defined. Go to stock geometry, reselect, hold the shift and uh, select the rectangle, hit the space bar, click OK, and it defaults to a one inch thick uh, stock because that's what I set up as my default. Uh, there's no real reason why it has to be that extra thickness, uh, but in this case it's not going to hurt anything. Now the one other thing I want to do is to define some boundary geometry. Uh, the reason being, I don't really see any need to be uh, cutting all of the stock out here down to the plane when I cut this thing out. It's enough for me to just simply cut out this, uh, this ellipse. So I want to make that geometry. I'm going to go back into Bob Art and I'm going to blank the emboss and this is the layer that has all of my, uh, my geometry in it. So I want to basically go about a quarter inch outside of, uh, of this outer ellipse. And I'll do that by going to Other, Offset. It's set to offset to quarter of an inch. Left side of chain. So I have to orient my chain properly for it to be on the outside. With the chain oriented that way, I click OK, and you see it creates another ellipse on the outside there. That will be the boundary geometry that I'll be using to uh, to machine this. And I can cancel out of that. All right. Oh, and uh, I'll bring the emboss back up because we're going to need to see it. Okay. You can also hide all the other stuff there. Alright, so you see that I've basically got my emboss. I've got this uh, boundary ellipse, which is set up at zero, but it doesn't really matter. It can be pretty much anywhere in the z-axis. And I've got my stock. So I'm ready to start machining at this point. So I go to the cam tree. I go to milling stock. Right-clicking on that gives me a menu from which I will pick mill three axis. And we'll... Uh, Go with a Z level rough, why not? With a quarter inch uh, ball nose end mill. So pick Z level rough, select geometry. In this case, you'll see that uh, when I just clicked anywhere on it, it turned the entire emboss red. Hit the space bar, click OK. Select boundary next. I'll click on that and holding shift to chain select that ellipse. 
hit the space bar, click OK, and I'm ready to go on to the next step in the wizard. Uh, rapid plane, top apart are fine. I don't need our bit. I don't really need much of anything on that one. Uh, in this case, we'll go with a quarter inch ball nose and mill, which is a part right there. That tool right there. Okay. So it's quarter inch diameter. Quarter radius is uh, one eighth. So that tells me that I've got a ball nose in there, a number of flutes. Ah, this is I'm cutting on a router with wood, but uh, for demonstration purposes, this will do. I haven't used Bobcad 24 in quite a while, so I don't really have the tool set up the way I would prefer to have them right now. Okay, uh, let's see, feeds and speeds are okay, so I'll just use the system feeds and speeds on that. Alright, I want to cut uh, the uh, strategies are either outside pocket in, or pocket in or pocket out. I'll go eh, pocket out's fine. Set it for climb. Depth of cut. I'm at 0 0.35, so let's go 0 0.12. Alright, my allowance, XYZ, I want to leave a good Excuse me, five hundredths. And I'll say that bottom of job is at minus zero point three five. <coughs> and that'll take it down to the plane there. Uh, the You'll have to set all this for your actual stock and how you actually want to cut it. I'm just giving this some parameters that uh, will work for the uh, the setup that I've got here. Plunge entry is fine. Uh, I think everything is fine by areas. Yeah, that'll work. So, <coughs> when I go to recite geometry, again, I've got the entire emboss as my geometry. Look okay. For boundary, Reselect and it highlights, so it's still got that. That's okay. And tell it to compute toolpath. Now you see that it's confined everything within the uh, the outer ellipse I've got here, and it's not really doing anything in this area because this area is above that uh, that initial depth that I set. That's exactly what I wanted it to do. It's just basically roughing itself out a hole down here and getting rid of all the stock in here that would be a little bit of a hassle when I go in with the finish toolpath. So, I like that toolpath. Uh, I'm not going to bother with the simulation. I can pretty well tell what's going on in here. So now we go to the finishing toolpath. Again, go to milling stock and right click, L3 axis. And in this case, I'm going to go with a slice planer. Next, again select geometry, select the whole emboss, hit the space bar, click OK, select boundary, hold the shift key and chain select that ellipse, hit the space bar, click OK. Next, top apart and rapid plane are fine, that's fine. The tool I want to use here is a 1 8 ball nose end mill which is that one right there. Okay. So diameter 0 0.125, one radius 0 0.0625, that's correct. That's a ball nose end mill. Check my feeds and speeds. I want to drop them down just a hair. And good enough. Go to next. I'll take a zigzag. Lace angle of 90 is fine. Climb mill. Uh, step over in this case, we'll say seven thousandths, probably fine. I want an allowance of zero. I want it to actually cut to the geometry because this is a finishing pass. Uh, ignore holes, there aren't any holes in this. Again, bottom of job, I want to go to minus zero point three five. Okay. Leads 
are all fine. Extents. Tooltip. I'll change that link to follow. And finish. So I go to this one. I reselect my geometry. For some reason, uh, P24 likes to lose its selection of geometry, so you have to go back in and, uh, and tell it. Don't know why that is, but it's not that much of a hassle. And boundary, it generally keeps this when I go to reselect. Yes, see, it's uh, highlighted in red there. That's okay. And now I tell it to compute the toolpath. All right. Uh, in V25, we don't really have a full-blown simulation, or in V24, we uh, don't have a full-blown simulation such as we have in V25, but we do have the verify function, which, let me kick this up, you know, I honestly don't know whether you even are going to see this. I'll see once I get the video done. If not, uh, all I'm doing is basically getting a quick visual representation of the uh, of the toolpath that's going to be cut. And I can already see that it's looking fine. I'll go ahead and speed this up. And that is actually good enough. I can see what the toolpath is doing. It's doing what I expected it to do. I'm happy with that. All right, well, there you are. Uh, the only thing left to do is to actually post and, uh, and uh, generate the G code on this. If you want to do it one feature at a time and generate your G-code separately, you can. If you've got a tool changing macro or something like that, you can generate them all together. I generally like to keep my uh, tool paths separate. So uh, what I'll do is go to the second feature and tell it not to post. You do that by right-clicking and then you've been the uh, menu that's presented. you got post, yes or no. And then... Uh, on the cam part, at the top of the cam tree menu, I go to milling tools, right click, post and save as. I get to uh, name it. In this case, I'll just go rough. You tell it where to uh, save to. Click save, and your generated G code is saved there. In this case, only for the feature that was set to post, which in this case is rough. So now I'm right clicking and turning post off on that one and then right clicking and turning post on on the finishing feature I can go back up to milling tools right click post and save as change that to finish click save and now my finishing toolpath is saved to a separate uh, piece of g-code and that's all there is to it hope this was helpful